Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, Maria. Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's lovely to be here with you. Oh, thank you so much for coming live on Talking From The Heart. I've been so excited to speak to you. I think this conversation has been a long time in the making and just trusting the divide timing of this morning. So welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. It's Yeah, it's taken us a while, hasn't it? But I trust that this is the perfect moment for us to connect. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I'm just saying um, welcome to everybody who's watching live and anybody who's watching on the replay. Feel free to put any comments, um, say hello, welcome yourself, or if there's any questions you want to ask Maria, please do post them in the thread. I can actually see them live. And then if we get time at the end, we've got loads to get through. Um, yeah, so I will uh, definitely try and get to them. If not, we'll come back to them. So welcome everyone. So talking from the heart is a bit of a passion of mine, Maria. So I started this about three years ago, um, really to work with other um, female entrepreneurs to really kind of inspire each other to kind of step out and step into the fullness of our being. And you're a perfect prime example of this. Um, just such an inspirational woman. Um, and I would just love to hear more about your journey. So um, just a little bit about you. So I met Maria two years ago through her famed astrology, um, we had a shared network and everyone was raving about this incredible intuitive astrologer. And um, the first time I read any of your work, Maria, it was just, it blew me away. Um, Maria is an incredible writer and she just has the ability to bring through this divine wisdom and talk about the cyclical nature of the universe and how we fit within it. And yeah, um, since then I, yeah, when was it? I think almost two years ago, um, I had a birth chart reading with you and that literally changed my life. So I would love to hear about your journey into astrology and how you started turning your passion into your business and something that you do to serve others. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. It's been so enriching to my life to connect with you as well over these past few years and we had a beautiful journey in Glastonbury together didn't we as well which we did. was really was lovely really lovely we got to meet in person um, so I really appreciate that um, my journey with astrology began um, in quite an unusual way perhaps I mean I've always been very interested in the cycles and rhythms of life I was very lucky to be brought up in a environment where that was honored in my family um, and of course as I got older I started to dive in a bit deeply and I knew about new moons and full moons and quite a lot of the basic stuff when I got to the age of 28 I had my Saturn return which a lot of you may remember is one of the most <laughs> um, profound astrological milestones and luckily we only get them every 28 years or so. Um, I had my Saturn return and everything in my life changed and one of my colleagues in the crystal shop where I work she said to me she said uh, oh you're having your Saturn return that's what's happening. So, <laughs> this is my life so crazy. Ah. <laughs> yeah, everything's falling apart. This is why. Um, and just as a side note, my Saturn return was in Scorpio in my eighth house, so it was quite catalytic. Um, so, being the Scorpionic soul that I am, I kind of went home and I'm researching everything about Saturn returns, and this has taken me even deeper into astrology. And you know, something just switched during that period. And I started to have dreams about the planets. <laughs> I started to have dreams about the cosmos. You know, I was dreaming about Venus and Chiron and um, just receiving these messages and downloads. And from that moment on, it stuck, my interest started to, you know, really grow and expand. And uh, maybe a few years after that, I was talking to a group of friends and they said, oh, you know, really you should write all this stuff down. I was explaining to them, you know, why they were feeling the way they were feeling, what was going on in the cosmos. And I did, 
I just wrote it down and started a little page on Facebook <laughs> and um, that was the beginning of it and from there it's just taken on a little bit of a life of its own and as I've grown and expanded through various work and trainings I've been doing it has evolved as well and now we're in this really beautiful place where there's a beautiful tribe of people that I get to work with which is um yeah it just makes me feel so grateful oh amazing it's just been it's been such a journey to watch you as well and watch the group expand and evolve and I think you know there's there's so much we could dive into there I'd love to talk a little bit about community because you mentioned just at the end there you know that you started off with a small Facebook group where you were sharing you know your passions your knowledge your inspiration and yet so many people I know personally on a personal basis I found it so supportive to with with such intense astrological and planetary energy in the in the cosmos at the moment and that has been for the last couple of years i felt myself going through some really intense cycles of inner work and deep diving and you know death and rebirth and the whole the whole shebang so for me it's been incredibly supportive and i know the feedback on the community is that that's definitely the feeling that they get that they read this and they can connect and go it's not just me you know i'm part of this whole network so how have you gone about um, building the kind of community and um, what advice could you give other people who are starting to set up their own groups? Yeah, I think it is really about sharing from a heart-centered, authentic space. Mm -hmm. um, as an Aries, I do everything kind of on my own terms a little bit. Everything has to be <laughs> I know um, that. <laughs> yeah, very authentic to me. And I think when you share from that place of what is just true for you without really concerning yourself with how it's received, then that true essence of your soul can really shine through. And that's what attracts the right people um to you i think um it's very interesting in my group because everybody seems to resonate on the same kind of energies they have the same kind of patterns and archetypes strong in their birth chart mm -hmm. and you know some people may read my work and it doesn't touch them because they're not in that same space um on a practical level i think it's really about um being willing to really stand in the truth of who you are and put that out into the world but also um really connecting with the people that are drawn to you as well really engaging with them and honoring them on their journeys too has been a big part of it and um i've been very very lucky to draw the right kind of people into my spaces i feel yeah, beautiful. I think that is, it's such a sort of a tribal network when you find like-minded people, like-minded souls, there is that sense of coming home to the family. And I think that's what's so beautiful in the community. You mentioned something that I'm really interested as well about, you know, authenticity and finding your authentic voice. Um, from my experience, that's something that I have struggled with um, over many years. And I, and Having done a lot of work, I've, I've looked into, you know, my throat is an area which is an area of weakness for me. So it tends to be where I find if I get sick or I'm stressed, then I'll lose my voice or get throat infections. And then I looked into it more and sort of looked at, you know, things from my childhood. And there were elements of, you know, being silenced as a child. I think, you know, growing up in the 80s, it was being seen and not heard. I think that was very common. Um, but I think more so than that, when I've really dug deep into it, there seems to be, for me certainly, um, around many lifetimes of being persecuted and, you know, being tortured and going back to those kind of witch, witch trials and those deaths that has created an inability to be brave enough to speak in an authentic voice. So I just wondered what your thoughts were around that and how you've managed to work through those energies and finding your authentic voice that is a really 
um, powerful question, I think. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, I think it's a collective wound of the feminine, as you've mentioned. You know, we all have these memories in ourselves of, you know, what happened to us, you know, the torture and persecution that we experienced when we really did um, step into our power in previous lifetimes, you know. It's what I like to call a witch wound or a priestess wound. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of us carry that. And then we get birthed into this society um, where, you know, we're told to be quiet, to be pretty, you know, seen and not heard. I grew up in the 80s as well, so I really <laughs> resonate with that one. Or, you know, even we may have grown up in households where there's, there's been violence or there has been um, an energy where we were punished for speaking our truth or it was better to be quiet and not seen. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of us carry these collective wounds and part of the deep healing process that's happening on the planet right now is that we are working through them collectively, mm -hmm. you know, we're all doing our individual work and this is something that comes up so much when I do readings for women, particularly when I do the priestess readings and the priestess work and I would say from my own experience of you know really moving through that and really feeling absolute terror every time that I created a video or put a post out you know worrying about what the reaction would be um, it's a process and it's a layer by layer step by step thing I think the only way to um, to do it is to really move through it in a way that feels comfortable for you mm -hmm. um, also, I have been doing a lot of deep work around the goddess and the feminine. I've been training in the Glastonbury Goddess Temple, and that has really helped me to move through a lot of my programming, a lot of my fear, and reclaim my voice. So I think, you know, we have to support each other in this process as well. We have to allow each other to be heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have to support women who are speaking out. Um, but from my own journey, I would say, just, just do it, <laughs> just mm -hmm. do it, just slowly start to put yourself out there. And as you move through the fear, it's like, okay, every time I do something and nothing bad happens to me, then my nervous system is healed a little bit. And I don't have that deep anxiety response that I've had previously. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. And do you think there's any, I know we're both a massive fan of working with different archetypes and different goddesses. And are there any particular goddesses or archetypes that you think would be really supportive for people who were really looking to step into their authentic voice? Yeah, the one that immediately comes to mind is Kali, of course. Um, <laughs> My of favorite course. goddess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love Carly too. She's one of the ones that I have always been very drawn to. Um, and she is a real liberator, I feel, and very strong in the cosmos as we're talking today. Pluto is stationing. We're going into a very, very Carly period. I always associate her with the energies of Scorpio, yeah. which is where the planets are shifting into right now. So I feel like Carly can really help us move through that fear um but i do feel like each and every one of us will have faces of the goddess that we really resonate with mm -hmm. um you know of course for me i work a lot with the lady of avalon uh and uh, the star goddess ariane rod are two of my um close companions on my journey but I think we all, you know, depending on what's going on in our birth chart, depending on our natural energetic resonance, we'll have an archetype that we can really work with that will support us in, you know, freeing our voice. And often the goddess will make herself known in very unusual ways <laughs> and very loud ways occasionally. So it's just a case of asking and listening. Um, but I do really feel like this rising of the feminine is just opening so many gateways for us at the moment to really step into that and really connect with it so i would you know when you're looking for 
a supportive divine feminine energy i would also look at your ancestry you know look at the um deities and goddesses that were um part of your ancestral lineage um, I was really mm. excited recently. I was sharing to find out that I had some um, Viking DNA because <laughs> I've always really resonated with that energy. And those, I'm funny, uh, I those think those I did too. That's so interesting. Wow, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, for example, I always associate Freya with the with the Aries mm. of energy, um, the Aries energy. So it's just really feeling what is calling to you um you know we all express ourselves in different ways but for me every goddess will encourage you to speak your truth and stand in the fullness of your being mm -hmm. thank you thank you for that now just talking about that kali energy obviously we're, we're changing seasons and as you said you know we, we're pluto's gestation we're moving into scorpio season and kali being the devouring mother about right? truth and transformation is you know, uh, a goddess that's associated with this season. Now, her energy is very difficult to be with for a lot of people. So when we're going through the stage of the seasons are changing and we're being asked to being drawn back in to our body to do the deep inner work, um, to go below, below the ground, you know, pull our energy inwards, like the seasons of Mother Guy, you know, we're being asked to do that on a personal level. And um, we're met with an energy like Holly, which is very much about a very powerful, destructive force in a lot of ways. How do you go about dealing with or, or getting support for yourself when perhaps you find yourself in these energies that are very powerful, that can feel like maybe everything is falling away, everything is 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 you know exploding all over the place you know it can be quite a destructive force and with that obviously brings that element of okay now we've got the void space before again things can rise in the spring but it's sometimes very difficult to work with those energies and how would you recommend people can kind of start maybe working with their kind of their dark goddess the sort of inner work they that's supportive of them of this season? That's another really interesting question. Thank you. Um, so I think that a lot of people have problems with Kali energy, with dark goddess energy, with the energies of autumn and winter because it's uncomfortable to sit with your shadows. It's uncomfortable to sit in the darkness. Um, we live in a culture that is very much based around, and a spirituality, you know, that is pervasive, that is very much based on love and light. Mm -hmm. um, we live in a culture that is very much based in productivity. Um, but I was listening to um, the wonderful Kay Patcher, who is one of my favorite astrologers the other, <laughs> the other week. And he was, you know, um, just reaffirming, you know, he was talking about this energy as well, and he was reaffirming that 33% of life is um, destruction, is letting go. It's part of the natural cycle of life. Mm -hmm. um, but we are not taught how to deal with that, you know. We're taught that if something feels wrong or if we feel pain or suffering, you know, make it go away, medicate it. Um, which is another reason why I think it's difficult for us to reach out for support because we think, oh, I don't want to um, burden that person or lower their energy. And I think these are things that we really have to move through um, in order to reach the next stage of evolution. We have to really embrace um, that there are periods of life which are challenging where we will go into the underworld and we will always experience the rebirth afterwards. But while we're there, it's one of the hardest things that we can do is to sit with it, is to really allow ourselves to feel it. And that is where all healing comes from, in my perspective. If you can sit with the, the anxiety of putting yourself out there, if you can sit with the pain of the heartbreak, that is where the healing will come from. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to getting support, I think this can be another thing that is very challenging for us that we're kind of learning at the moment is that it's okay to be vulnerable and reach out. This is Chiron in Aries at the moment, you know. It's okay for us to be authentic in our vulnerability as well 
this facade of perfection, of enlightenment that what a lot of us have um, been trained to aspire to is not healthy in a lot of ways. So I would say don't be afraid to share how you're really feeling. Don't be afraid to reach out when you need to. Don't be afraid that you will, um, you know, project negative energy onto the other person because ultimately that's how we heal, you know, that's how we're going to move forward in our collective evolution at this time with the North Node in Cancer is to come home to the tribe, mm -hmm. come home to the mother, come home to nurturing each other, supporting each other. Um, you know, there's a lot of competition that happens in the spiritual community as well, I think. Um, this is something that is you know really apparent during Libra season <laughs> so <laughs> it's really <laughs> yeah um, where we're all wanting to collaborate and communicate so I think that the more that we can you know also make it make ourselves available to support each other as well and to make ourselves available to listen and not, not to turn away from the dark and heavy stuff the more that we can create, you know, bonds that go way beyond the superficial. Yeah, I think, thank you for that, Marie, because um, having been somebody whose natural tendencies is towards the light and towards positivity and spent a lot of my time training in, you know, um, different um, techniques in which I could kind of lift the emotions in order to transform into a place that, I liked on that scale of the emotions and I was very happy living in that sort of lighter brighter more positive place and actually what it really called me to do was come back to myself and start doing the inner work and really starting to look at those you know those deeper dark, darker aspects of myself which I'd previously pushed away and I think it was such a powerful experience that I went through it was so incredibly painful, but what I really found was coming back to places like, you know, inspirations for your journey back to Avalon, you know, your group and um, communities of women and where you could really feel that you were being held in that kind of collective knowing where it was like, it's okay, we've got you. And even if it was just to know that maybe just other people were going through the same, you know, when you're hanging in the underworld, bleeding, and you're like, no, it's been days, when's this gonna end? Yeah. And then you're like, oh, you come out the other end and you have a conversation and somebody else has been dealing with something very, very similar. And, and I think that's what's so beautiful. You build a deeper connection rather than that surface level. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, you know? And it can be really supportive. And certainly that's why I've, I've loved being part of your, your group and your network. So thank you for that. Now, in terms of, um, I'm really interested. So you talked a little bit about this, you know, about diving deep and being in the cycles and rhythms of, of nature and how we can do that. Now, on a practical level, I, I would love just to, to talk about this briefly because um, one of my big passions is living in cycle with your female body, um, with the cycles of the seasons, and how that can support you to feeling like you're in flow with the cosmos, to feel like you're not resisting. Um, my experience was spending many, many years in a very masculine corporate environment where I there was only on or off, and I was always on. So regardless of where I was in my cycle, regardless of where I was in the seasons, it was going full speed ahead. <laughs> you know, it was the height of summer. It was the point of ovulation in my chart. And it created a high level of anxiety in my body and massive burnout. So I went through years and years of, you know, pushing myself too hard, 80, 90 hour weeks. And as a result of that, I felt very distant, kind of detached from my own physical body and so out of natural rhythm of being nature that I felt that it was, you know, the beautiful nature and the universe was going on along here and I was sort of really in resistance to all elements of it, not consciously, just 
through the choices I was making. So I was just wondering whether you could talk a little bit about how to live in rhythm and the benefits that it can really give, not just women, but anybody really. Yeah, this is a really interesting topic as well. This is, I really feel like, a major cause of um, mental, emotional and physical sickness mm -hmm. in our society because we are disconnected from ourselves, from our bodies, from each other. We're just full on all of the time. You know, we want to be successful. We want to ensure that we have enough to survive. And this is the kind of trap that we get caught in. Um, so when we start to really come home to ourselves and to understand that we are not separate from the earth and the cosmos, our, you know, the atoms, the minerals that make up our body are the same as the minerals that make up Mother Earth. You know, we're all made of stardust. We're not separate from these cycles. So when we try and live out of alignment with them, of course we get ill, of course we get depressed. <laughs> um, you know, we're going against the natural rhythm of life. So I really think that simple ways to do this are, of course, honoring the moon cycles, we can watch the ebb and flow of the moon in the sky. We can see that she's not always full and bright and illuminated. Sometimes she is dark and hidden and withdrawn. And um, you know, she reminds us that everything changes and flows and transforms. And of course, you know, we work with the solar cycles, the cycles of the sun and the earth as well, the changing seasons. Um, what I always find is really interesting is as we go into this dark time of winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, um, we're still expected to be very busy. We're still expected to be very productive. You know, we go towards Christmas time, which is the darkest, most internal point of the year, you know, the winter solstice. And we're doing our best to light everything up and to be as busy as we can, <laughs> you know. Um, so it, once we become aware of that, and start to um, really integrate it into our lives, we start to, you know, really embody the cycles of change within us. And, you know, then we can welcome the natural rhythms of our lives, you know, because we can see it reflected um, on the face of Mother Earth. You know, we see the beauty, the blossoming of the spring and summer, and then we see the darkness and barrenness as winter. And so it is with us. Um, and that is reflected in our astrological chart as well by certain transits that we may be having. We may resonate more with certain um, seasons of the year, depending on the archetypes that are in our chart. So, for example, I have a lot of um, Scorpio and Capricorn in my chart. So I'm very happy in this time of year. Um, you know, those of you who are Taurus, Gemini, Leos, you know, you're going to really like the sun, the solar energy and the warmth and the light and the rebirth and the blossoming. So we can see, you know, where we um, naturally resist different parts of the cycle. And when we become aware of that, we can integrate it. Um, I like to, on a practical level, you know, one of the things you will always see in my home, every season, the altars change, you know, there is symbolic things on my little altar, that, well, giant altar that I now have, it's growing. <laughs> growing by the day, yeah, <laughs> growing by the day, at the moment we've got pine cones and fallen leaves and fairy lights and pumpkins, <laughs> so, yeah, and, you know, in the spring there will be hawthorn and, um, flowers and you know beautiful rose quartz crystals and things like that so that's one of the ways that we can really come in alignment but I think that one of the most potent ways that we come into alignment with the lunar and solar cycles and even the bigger cycles in the heavens of the, the sun and stars is to really come together in community to really come together in circle online or in person to mark these changing phases and to journey together through them is deeply healing, you know? Um, and that's what our ancestors did. You know, we see these amazing monuments, we see Stonehenge, we see the Mayan temples, all built in alignment with these cycles of the cosmos and earth. 
So we know it was important, it was integral to their daily life and integral to their survival as well, because it marked the agricultural cycles of seeding and sowing as well. So um, there is something within us that knows that it is beneficial to our well-being and our physical, mental and emotional health to live in alignment. Mm, I think that's such a beautiful reminder just about, you know, ancient wisdom and, you know, how many generations before us have actually been working and, and you know, living on the land, working with the seasons and, and how they use the energy and really looking backwards to say, say, for example, you know, as you know, I'm a, I'm a, I love essential oils and just using plant based medicine and it's, you know, it's going back to the things that were known by the ancients and known by the people before us. I think that's really important. And I would love you to share just a little bit about your um, moon gatherings um, and how people, if they're interested in um, joining you, how they can find out more information and, and where they where they happen. Yeah, so um, I do new and full moon gatherings. They are online ones at the moment. If you live locally, you're welcome to join me in person. Um, but I know a lot of you who are listening and watching and who are in the groups are all over the world, which is also amazing because we get to see the different hemispheres and how the astrological energies are moving through those as well. Sorry, Maria, just remind us where you are, just in case anybody wants to come and join you locally. Uh, so I'm in the Midlands, I'm in Worcester, and um, of course in Glastonbury quite a bit as well, so you can connect with me there. Um, but the moon, the moon gatherings, we gather together every new moon and every full moon, and we really work deeply with the energies of the lunar cycle and the astrology that happens and the seasonal energies. Um, we do you know deep work we do shadow work journaling self-reflection healing you know whatever is um appropriate and in alignment with the signs of the zodiac that we are working with so we've created quite a little bit of a community an online community around this we've got a little bit of a beehive <laughs> Um, that goes on in the groups where you can share and talk and connect. Um, I really encourage people to share their work, share their voice in the groups as well and to really, you know, support each other. So if you could just share the name of your, your groups and then we can pop some details on um, below our chat so that if people want to connect and join you, they can find easy access to that. Okay. Um, the group where you will be invited to the moon cycles is awakening the goddess in astrology because that's one of my big passions mm -hmm. and um the uh i have a main page and a group called inspirations for your journey back to avalon um that's named so because i feel like you know when we go back into living in alignment we go back to those magical times so um, those are the groups and there's also a website with the same name as well. Amazing. So inspirations for your journey back to Avalon and awakening the goddess in astrology. Is that right? Perfect. Yeah. I should know I'm on there all the time. <laughs> um, and they're beautiful communities. It feels a really safe place to share, a safe place to be involved in, in, in community and actually discussing how these are affecting you. You know, it's it's really, really a beautiful nurturing space. So thank you. Thank you for that. Now, it's actually, I would love to hear about any projects that you're working with or anything kind of coming up, how people can kind of get involved in your work. I know I've had several readings from you and they've blown me away. I'm like, can I have a reading a week? <laughs> You just feel like they're so supportive. And then you're like, oh no, I've got to do it on my own. Where's Maria? Um, I'd love to hear about what you're working on at the moment. Oh, that's really lovely. It's always a pleasure to work with you. I'm so lucky with the people that I get in, in my energy sphere. Everybody that I work with is just so, so beautiful and open. Um, so of course I offer readings so you can have astrology readings with me you'll find all the details on the website uh, one of the things that I offer that other astrologers don't is a priestess presence reading so if you're interested in the priestess energies and um, the divine feminine archetypes in your birth chart that may resonate with you 
Um, I'm also offering some soul dive sessions to do some shadow work uh, with these powerful Kali energies over the coming months. We've talked a little bit about my moon groups, which are every new moon and full moon. And the thing that I'm most excited about at the moment is that next year I will be teaching a Star Priestess course in Glastonbury. Um, so if you want to come in there. Exclusive. It is, it is. Um, so I, I've been working on this all year, putting it together, and um, it will be beginning with Aries, of course, because we have to, you know, let Aries go first always. <laughs> so um, it'll be starting next year in April, um, in March, for the spring equinox, and uh, we will be diving into these archetypes. We'll be learning how to, you know, read our own charts, read other people's charts, embody the archetypes in our chart, and learn the deep feminine essence of astrology which is not always so prevalent in what we what we see put out there at the moment so wow that sounds absolutely amazing so uh, how does it work is it a weekend gathering or do you meet once how you know how does on a practical level how how does it work how are you going to be sharing the the teachings so those of you who attend would be journeying to Glastonbury around every six weeks for a weekend workshop. Um, mm. Every weekend we will be focusing on a different planetary energy in alignment with the changing seasons. So we'll do um, the sun, we'll do Mars, we'll do awakening the star fire at, at the spring equinox for Aries. We'll go into Venus for Beltane. We'll do Inanna's journey and We'll go into the moon energies, the oracling energies at the um, season of water, cancer season, the uh, summer solstice and so on as we go through the year. So that sounds cool. so rich and so inspiring. I, I sign me up. <laughs> and, uh, um, oh, it's just been so wonderful to talk to you, Maria. And I think you're such an inspirational leader to so many people. How can it, if people are just like watching you and going, that's amazing, but how she's creating so much and she's done so much. And, you know, they start having that kind of panic around, you know, everybody sort of, Certainly, I know I've experienced this where you're you're on your journey, but you perhaps haven't got as far as the next person or they're seeing you and they're going, that just feel, feels like that's too big for me. How would you kind of support and encourage other women to just take their step onto their own path and their own journey towards, you know, sharing a beautiful heart centered business like yours? So I think that it's the, the stuff that goes on beneath the surface. So it's almost like an iceberg and we see a tiny tip of, um, you know, what's happening in somebody's life. We don't see all of the work that's going on underneath, um, you know, the daily devotion and practice that you that you need to apply, I think, is something that we don't, again, always talk about. So for me, it's been a, um, a very gradual process that's built up over many years um you know really hitting its full force in in the Saturn return at 28 and now I'm 35 so that's been seven years that I've been kind of working towards this and I think that what's really important is that we create a strong solid practical container for our inspiration and creativity to move through so this is what I always refer to as the Virgo Pisces axis in the birth chart or in the cosmos. So we have, you know, this beautiful inspiration, the muse, the divine energy, the healing, the compassion of Pisces, the spiritual connection. And it has to come down through Virgo. It has to be anchored with discipline, devotion and focus so that it can become tangible in the real world and also i think that there is this element with social media that we're seeing oh you know they've got more followers than me or you know they're more productive than me and i think that we need to maybe take our focus away from that a little bit and think about what am i serving with my work 
you know for me it always comes back to serving something outside of myself you know it's not about me it's about me creating a container for whatever wants to come down through me hopefully that makes sense yeah it yeah. does it really <laughs> does and it's just so wonderful to hear that because I think I can sometimes get a little disheartened by where you see people who expect that in overnight success and you know there, there are so many people within especially you know YouTube and Instagram who uh, suddenly you know overnight they've got thousands and thousands of followers but what you don't necessarily see is that other people who are working solidly week after week week after week to prepare themselves and the offering that they're actually want to put forth in the world and I think we're always sort of looking for that um or a lot of people can be looking for that you know the shortcut and and to me life's not really about the short the shortcut um, you miss something in the beauty of actually being able to develop that. But I think also, I think it's really important to say, you know, what you see on the outside is just a very, very small part of what happens in somebody else's life. And I think sometimes it's easy to judge that, like the Instagram face, you know, is that the real face? Is that the whole life? Or is that just, you know, the moments that people want to share and they want you to see? So I think there is an illusionary element of that. Um, so, yeah, I just want to encourage other women who maybe are struggling. Um, one thing that was raised with one of my best friends yesterday, who's another, she's an amazing, very talented woman. And she is, you know, saying the thing is, it's so difficult because I have to do everything on my own. And that sense of loneliness and that sense of isolation and overwhelm that you can get as a solopreneur, you know, as somebody who is creating everything from, you know, inception all the way through to delivery. Could you share any wisdom around how you've dealt with that and how what's been supportive in your process? Yeah, that's been a bit of a big lesson for me, actually, um, because being an Aries Capricorn type, I'm very much around doing everything for myself, you know, quite in my what we might refer to as masculine energy a lot of the time. Um, so through working with the goddess, I've learned about, you know, having creating that time and space to step back as well and being in the feminine receptive energy. But I would also say that again it comes back to us supporting each other and to not being afraid to ask for help you know i have an amazing um circle of people who support me there's lovely morgana who does the websites and helps me admin the group there's paula who co-creates with me and i think we really need to move out of that mindset of i have to do it all myself mm -hmm. again you know coming back to vulnerability and authenticity and knowing that there is enough for everybody you know, mm. we can share it we can spread it around and again coming out of that energy of competition and into how can i help support my sister yeah, that's a beautiful conversation. And I had seen somebody else, actually a lady that Sarah, who is in your network and her talking about, you know, women being stingy with other women in business yeah. and not really supporting them. And I certainly have noticed that energy in being an entrepreneur, but also in corporate life where it's like, oh, you know, if somebody else, another woman's doing well. That means that's going to affect my ability to do well or be successful or succeed in yeah. any way. I think, I get a sense that that isn't necessarily the energy of the tribe that you're creating or that, you know, I'm lucky enough to be able to create and total life transformation, which is one of the groups I've set up. But I still think we could all do that a little bit more just to, to reach out and support one another. And, you know, to, as you say, even if it's just a like and a share, there's always more, I think, that we can do in terms of supporting each other just to be, for, for us all to rise together, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's what we call in the um, the goddess community, sister wounds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, going back to that element of our programming and, um, you know, way back in the burning times, it was really this 
essence where we were trying to save ourselves. you know it's not me it was her that did it <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> um and also it's something that we're taught through the patriarchal culture that we live in is to compete with each other you know i'm the most beautiful or i'm the most successful and um this kind of thing so it's something that is really you know dying out i feel but I do feel, you know, it's actually really coming through as I'm having this conversation with you is that we don't support each other enough. Yeah, um, so, so that could lead to that lack of community, which I think is a wound that we all suffer from as well. And I think, you know, recreates that feeling of isolation and having to do it on your own. And, you know, I think that's, that's so much part of the journey. I mean, I certainly um, have had the craziest experience since leaving corporate and it's been beautiful it's been challenging and it's taught me a lot of about looking at myself and really the things that I feel you know is it more important to have all of these external um things that you're saying okay this is who or is it important to be really this beautiful vessel of love and light and really you know sharing that with the world and and I think you know that there, there's place for both um there's place for both across that axis. We know so well, don't we, the Capricorn Cancer, uh, Capricorn Cancer axis, and um, being Capricorn Moon like yourself. You know, it's there's that that feeling of wanting to strive all the time to to build and create these, you know, these lasting legacies. And I think, you know, sometimes we need to be more gentle and really look at how we can support ourselves to get there and how we can support others in a compassionate environment. So thank you for being a beautiful example of that. And thank you for sharing your gorgeous work with us in the world. Um, and I'm so excited for your upcoming course next year. I'm literally there. Put me down, number one on the list. Um, and yeah, so what we'll do is, um, unless you've got anything else you would like to share um, with the group, we can maybe open up and see if there's any questions out there. So I don't know, I can't actually see the comments. Um, let me see if I can see anybody live. There's a couple of viewers online. So if you are online, Taria, Joey, Jill, um, then please send us some questions otherwise for anybody that's watching this on the replay we will be posting this on the replay probably uploading it to youtube so feel free in whatever way just to get in touch if you've got any questions for maria we'll obviously post about how you can get in contact and learn more about um, personal one-to-one -one sessions and her groups and then her beautiful new offering next year so thank you so much maria thank you for joining me it's been such a pleasure Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a really beautiful conversation. I have a lot to think about now as well today. So. We could have gone on forever, you and I. I, just, uh, but I just thought it's it's lovely to snapshot into to your work and your body of work and opening up hopefully a few conversations for people. So thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, you too. You too. Lots of love. Bye-bye, goddess. Bye. 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 Bye.